Hello. Today I would like to present to you an exploration of the formal properties of PromQL. Now, you probably don't know me. I'm actually a computer scientist, and I work in the field of expanding computer science, particularly as it applies to operational monitoring. I'm the winner of the Victor uh, W. Graham Prize for Pure Mathematics, a scholar for computer science at Trinity Dublin. In Google, I worked actually primarily on expanding the horizons of what was possible with monitoring tools. There's also some monitoring system I work on. It's purely of academic interest because, you know, it uses pull, that can't scale. <laughs> So PromQL um, has three parts. It has a data model, it has a query language, and it has an execution uh, environment, which is pretty common across any language. So the data model, um, it is based on this idea of labels and samples, combining them into time series. A time series is a unique set of labels and one or more samples. Labels are a set of pairs of strings, and the first of each pair has to be unique within a uh, label within a time series. And a sample, then, is a pair of an int64 and a float64, and within a time series, the first of the pair is, again, unique. So what can we describe with this model? Well, from a computer science standpoint, we can get, do a list uh, by using these labels to number things, and then we've got, you're not using the int64, it's using a float. We'll note it supports full float64. Uh, so you can have NAND, you can have INT. You can also do a grid by going two-dimensional. And you can do like, all your other structures like this. The query language, then, um, it selects time series based on the existence and non-existence of these labels. Um, and from there, there's a whole pile of operators and functions. So there is relational algebra based on the labels across multiple time series. You can do within one time series. Uh, you can slice the other way and do fa samples, functions and samples within them. Uh, there are operations and functions on single samples across time series, such as aggregation. There are type conversion functions, as we know that PromQL is both strongly and statically typed. And there are some display-related functions which aren't particularly interesting. There's also one function to manipulate labels, uh, because this turns out to be kind of important. Normally, you can only work with labels that are the same and do relational algebra based on them. Uh, because you can work, for example, with these ones, x equals 1, y equals 1, and x equals 2, y equals 2, because both of y equals 1. The label replace function allows us to change the 1 into a 2 via regular expressions. Now, obviously, regular expressions are a dirty word in formal computer science, but, you know, you do it, you must. Now, the execution environment is a little bit weird. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure where this came from. So, the execution environment, there is a counter, a single counter. And when you're looking up time series, what it does is it looks at all the time series and it looks for sample values that are between the value of the counter and the counter minus, minus 300,000. Yeah, it's weird. Um, and out of those, the, sample, well, the highest first value, the highest in 64, will be the one that's presented to you. And in each execution cycle, because it runs in cycle, this counter increases by a number that's usually between 1,000 and uh, 60,000. Odd system. Um, you can execute expressions statelessly and also statefully and put the answers back in. Note, however, that the, there is no ordering on those expressions um, and they may refer to ones in the current cycle or the previous one. Uh, so there's no atomicity here at all. So the big question you always have to ask as a computer scientist is how powerful is this language? Now, we can model a list, we can do relational algebra, we can record new results. Then, you know, we could create some form of tape from the list and build a finite state machine on top of that. But to be honest, being there, done that, that's so 2007. So, what else could we do as powerful but a little more aesthetically pleasing? Well, we could build a grid and do some form of simple two-dimensional semi-autonomous autonomy on top of it. You know, simple grad student project. So, let's go for something very simple. Uh, keep it basic, nice and binary, states 0 and 1. Using regular expressions to manipulate decimals is not going to be easy, particularly as the decimals could be of arbitrary length. So we're going to use a unary numbering system. So binary has two digits, tenary has three, decimal has ten, unary has one. So one is a one, two is one one, three is one one one, and so on and so forth. Yeah, this is an actual thing, to be clear. Uh, and then we can have a time series. Um, we're just going to have a convention of using underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore to be the name of things, uh, called init. And that's the size of the grid we want, and all value 1. And the grid itself will store it in grid. Now, for the edges of the grid, um, 
we can do some manipulation of the counter to do randomish values as there's no real random number generator available in PromQL. Apparently, people want things to be deterministic. It doesn't help at all with the Monte Carlo simulations. Um, so here are the rules. So the first rule we're going to have is that if you have exactly three neighbors or one, become one. And I think it's fairly obvious what this does. So it just basically goes through each of the cells around it. Uh, and if it's not present, it pulls in a random number based on the counter. Uh, and yeah, if that's equal to three, it puts in a one. Great. And at this point, actually, I, this should really have been the first slide. There's a public health warning on these slides. Uh, so yeah. You all signed the, uh, the waiver, right? Yeah. OK, so that's the diligence taken care of. Um, uh, the second rule is that if you are one you are, and exactly two neighbors are one, then you stay one. Once again, it's the same formula again. Um, and it's equal to two, then it's one. And it's checking, of course, the grid position itself is equal to one first. The final rule. Uh, is a bit trivial, otherwise you are zero. Now, we want to join these together, and the OR operator is basically your outer left join. It, um, it will be nice to have separate expressions and then do the OR together, but due to the fact that all uh, the expressions and then putting them back into the system on each cycle is done simultaneously with no ordering, that doesn't work, so we have to do a little bit of beta reduction. Now, what does this give us? This is an output. And the answer is it gives us something like this. The academic world is still on web 1.0. That is a HTTP meta refresh. <laughs> yes. So this is what's known as uh, Conway's Life, which was uh, devised in 1970 by John Conway, a mathematician. It is known to be Turing capable, which Conway uh, showed in 1982. And full Turing machines have been implemented in Conway's Life by two poles and an atom uh, in the 2000s. Now, for those of you who are not, uh, you know, formal computer science researchers like myself, uh, if something is Turing capable, that means that it can compute anything possible, and it is as powerful as a language as Lisp or Haskell or Node.js or even Go. So this means that there is no more monitoring system can have a language that is more powerful than PromQL. Which I think that the uh, authors of that will be rather happy to say. So here's some resources, so there's information more on how this goes on. There is a live demo that's been running continuously for almost a year, and more information about myself and my academic adventures. Thank you.